Well, as I say, it came out of a natural course out of my research in sensory deprivation, which is the opposite of sensation seeking. But I must admit, uh, perhaps I was uh, at the time in my life, you know, I uh, looked at people, friends, who are higher sense, high sensation seekers, and I looked at them with some kind of, I used them as one, kind of a prototype when I was designing this straight. I thought, well, what would they, what are the things they do? What do they like? You know, uh, as a kind of prototype for writing items for my scale. Now, it didn't, of course, it went, you know, we had other ways than uh, once we had these items. But you have to have the idea. It was a new idea for a trait. It was a new, uh, which no one was really measuring at that time. Okay, so to get my idea, I looked around me at you know and what people were doing, and I said, and I and my and the first form of this test, we depended on. Uh, uh, I'd like to do. We say, would you like to do this? Like, would you like to do uh, parachute skydiving? You know, because we assume most people aren't doing it, but the mere liking to the wanting to the think thought they would like to do it is something that characterizes a higher sensation seeker. Okay, whereas a lower sensation, no, that's crazy. Why would I want to do that? You know, that's dangerous. So in, in what people might like to do, well, it's our first items for our thrill and adventure seeking subscale. Okay, then we ask, well, what, uh, what about, be, what, you know, what are the other aspects? How do, you know, and we looked at sex, uh, drugs, and we asked questions about, uh, the, would you like to do this? Would you like to do that? Or in the case of sex, what do you like to do? You know. Uh, or what, what are your attitudes toward? Are they permissive attitudes? Those are the sort of things that we looked at. So that's how I got the uh, initial items. Now we have different kinds of items now that don't include content, just the need for excitement. Well, I would say to be a uh, publishing professor teaching, you can't be too high. Because if you're too high, you know, you know you're out of the, you're out doing other things. Not you're not doing research and writing. So, but I I was uh, I would say I was higher than uh, than average than the average professor. Okay. Now recently that became a, a moot point when they discovered this gene, the dopamine four receptor gene. And I was in England by this time. I was you know getting on in age. My it was my last sabbatical. But I had the chance. I was in the genetics lab there. Uh, and I had the chance to uh, have my own DNA uh, examined for the presence of this particular gene, uh, the form of the gene. So I did, and I found I had the long form of the gene, which is the type associated with sensation seeking. But as I t explained to my uh, colleagues there, uh, uh, my sensation seeking at that, by the time you're 60, my sensation seeking was confined to riding the top of the double decker bus in London, you know. Uh, because uh, age, you know, you may have a gene for something, but the, its expression is affected by other biological factors related to age, normal, like the rise in MAO with age, uh, which reduces sensation seeking.